our contributions in education will be our legacy in this industry. Whether it's through live education or maybe through social media, we're always trying to make a personal connection with you, the learner. At FanVia, we believe our smile is our business card and our personality is our logo. And how we make people feel after you experience our education and tools is our trade. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us, my friends, and be a part of the Sandia community. Happy Tuesday to you all. Welcome to Transformation Tuesday. Got great education for you, as always, this week. Uh, and of course, today is Transformation Tuesday. If you missed Mannequin Monday yesterday with Mandy Nicola, you can always come back to the Facebook and YouTube page and just check that out, the recording. Um, today, of course, we have Carla Valenzuela doing some beautifully braided updo. And tomorrow, the 25th, on our Instagram Live, you can join us. You can check out Amanda Ziegelman. They're going to be showing us some hand styling, creating texture, and then come back here on the YouTube and Facebook channel on at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern for Wellness Wednesday. Lindsay Olson is going to be my guest, and we're going to talk about the journey of an artist. <laughs> August 26th. We also have Instagram Live, and that's with Blake Reed Evans. We're doing bobs, angles, and shapes. So that's over on Instagram. And then also on the 26th, if you work within a school system, we have a school-specific training that is for our partner schools, but you can join us to check out what we do for our partner schools. And you can head to sambia.com backslash skills up for more information. And if you are at ABS, make sure you pop in and check out the uh, the classes we have going on, lots of education going on there for you live. And one more thing before education, <laughs> we do have some great sales going on at the website until the end of the month. So don't miss out on those at sambia.com. So let's jump into the education, shall we? Please type into the chat where you're watching from. We want to know who's in the audience with us. And let's bring on Carla. Carla is an Arizona based hairstylist. She works behind the chair for the past decade as, and, and, and is a Redken artist. She's worked LA Fashion Week. She's been featured on Bang Style, Beauty Launchpad, and many others. And she's also a part of the Redken Styling Society, which she focuses on showcasing the latest hairstyling trends and stylers for the Redken brand. And of course, she's a Sam V ambassador. So perfect person to share with us some beautiful braids. So in the chat, please welcome Ms. Carla. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm so happy to be here today. I'm going to be doing a braided updo and going over ways to get your braids to hold and look fuller. So if you're watching, just give me some hearts. Let me know where you're at. I'm going to start off by um, putting a little bit of Iron Shape 11 on my mannequin. This is going to give me some heat protection, and it also gives me hold. And what I'm going to do is we're going for a braided updo with a fishtail braid, and this updo is going to be mostly all braids, so I don't have to curl the hair a lot, so it's going to be very time-saving. And um, I'll show you how to get some good texture in there as well. If you have any questions, please type them in. I would love to answer them for you as I'm working on this. Okay, let's lock her in. There we go. Okay, so now that um, she's prepped, I'm going to brush that through and... I'm going to go in with my Sanvia texture iron and start creating some texture and volume. And I want to place my braid on kind of like a crown braid. So I'm going to start adding the texture to her quadrant by her ear, her left and her right quadrant. 
So I'm going to clip that out of my way, clip the back out of my way, and do the other side. And we will add a little bit of curls, but it's not going to be a lot. So it's going to go pretty fast. All right. Hello. I really enjoy your dad's work as well. <laughs> my dad's work. Yeah, who's yeah. your father? <laughs> well, who's my dad? So <laughs> my dad, I don't know. <laughs> my dad's in Mexico and he makes jewelry. So he um I'm like, what what work? <laughs> Maybe Terry <laughs> has seen his jewelry. They do have an Instagram page, so, and I will post it on there, so, I don't know, maybe somebody saw it someday, but, okay, so I'm using my Sanvia Texture Iron. This iron um, is awesome to create texture. The harder you press onto it, the more texture you're going to get, so you can see that if I flash it through show it to the screen, you can see the texture I'm getting. So you can really play around with how much texture you want. Um, the bigger the sections of the hair that you're um, pressing onto, the less texture you're gonna get. So also, if you don't want to see a lot of texture, or you wanna have the volume, you don't have to pick every section up. One thing I like to do for that is just start to grab sections and um, you can weave it. And that will also help you um, hide a little bit of the texture. What I love about the texture iron is that it's the crimp in there is so, so tiny that it hides very well. But if you still want to have it not show as much. You can just um, weave the hair in and out, leaving some areas not textured. Sometimes um, clients will be a little afraid of the texture, I find, um, just because they don't know what it does. But once you show them how to use the iron, they love the volume it gives and um, you can um, just show them how to use it at the roots if they don't want to see the texture all over. So even if your client's not doing braids, maybe they lack a little bit of volume at the crown, maybe because they have really fine, soft hair. So you can always just show them to um, use the texture iron up at the roots and get some really good texture and volume. And this iron has three heat settings. You can use it on low, which is um, the heat on that is 300 and um, 300, sorry. 75. 75. And then we have color treated as well. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> okay. So she's pretty fluffy now. And what I'm gonna do is do a fishtail braid, but I'm gonna do a Dutch fishtail braid. So I'm gonna get closer to the screen so y'all can see how I'm gonna do this because I feel like um, a fishtail braid is pretty simple, but a Dutch fishtail braid can be a little bit harder. Um, and I personally love Dutch fishtail braids on, updos because I feel like it adds a lot more volume. So I'm going to turn her down a little bit so you can see. But keep in mind that if you're doing this on your client or your model, um, you want to make sure that your body positioning is at the direction that you want the braid to sit. So if I was working in not in real life, I would have her head down. I mean up and then move towards the back, move my body towards the back because this is going to lay over the back. So, but just for you guys to see, I'm gonna bring her down so you can see how I grab every strand. So this is a fishtail braid. 
Dutch fish tail braid. So I'm going to have two sections and you want to start off by taking a small section off your right hand and crossing it over and under the second section onto my left hand. Now I'm going to repeat that again, but this time I'm going to add hair from underneath and cross it over under. And this right here, if you want to have some hair fall down, you can start to leaving, start leaving some of the hair down there. But for now, I'm just gonna bring it all the way over. And then now with my left hand, I'm going to grab a small section, cross it over to my right hand underneath. And now I'm going to add hair from underneath and cross it over underneath. So the difference between a Dutch fish tail braid and a fish tail braid is that you're actually crossing over twice before you move on to the opposite side. And you're also adding hair. So on the second time that you cross over, you're adding the hair. So if you guys are with me, leave me some hearts. I know this one can be a little bit more um, more confusing at first. And as you can see, the shape is not there yet, but give it some time and you'll start to see the fish shell take form. Carla, on a typical fish tail, do you usually cross the hair over top versus underneath too? I do. You want, with a regular fish tail braid, you're going to cross it on the, over the top. Okay. So the reason why you want this one underneath is so that it's more three-dimensional and it sits on top of the hair or the head. And that's why I like doing these on up juice because I feel like it shows a lot more. So I'm going to also mention that um, my tension is pretty low. I'm not pulling on the braid too much because I'm going to pull it apart a little bit. So I don't want it to get too tight and hard to pull apart. So again, I'm going to grab my section from my right hand, a small piece, and I'm crossing it underneath and joining that piece of hair to my left hand. Now I'm going to add more hair to my right hand and cross that underneath and add it to my left hand. Left side, add a, grab a section from the braid, bring it underneath, cross over to my right hand and add more hair, cross it under to my right hand and just continue. So I'm going to just continue. And now that I'm getting closer to the ear, my body is turning towards the back of her head. If you don't do this, your braid will start to be floppy and not sit in the right direction. So very important to uh, be looking in the mirror to see where your client's head is facing and where you're facing. I like that tip a lot because that is definitely something that I don't hear talked about super often with upstyling is body position. You know, we talk so much about body position when we're cutting hair, which, you know, like we were all taught those things in school, body position matters, but you don't actually hear it talked about a lot with upstyling. That makes a lot of sense. For sure. Definitely. It, if you don't do it, you're, you're not going to get that. Um, you'll have like a, a baggy, gap so also with ponytails as well body positioning is super important so you want to make sure you you have the head in place all right so now that i cross towards the ear i'm actually going to stop doing the dutch braid um i'm not by not adding hair but i'm still going to continue to finish the fishtail so um, I'm going to add hair and cross it over to my right hand and over to my left. 
So you can see the braid is taking shape now. But I'm not um, adding any more hair from underneath. So I'm going to clip that away so no more hair keeps coming to my hand. And just finish. Seem tough with seeming tough without practice. Hi, Sonia. Yes, um, it took me a while to learn this, but the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. And what really helped me is actually speaking out loud. So as I'm as I was learning, I always talk to myself out loud. And just how I was doing right now, I'll say um, add hair, add it to my right hand. Now bring hair from my right side, add it to my left hand and continue. So if you kind of start saying that to yourself, you're you're really going to get better at braiding with any kind of braid because it's a little difficult to remember the patterns. <laughs> we actually learned that that's how surgeons learn to do different types of surgery is they always have a partner and they're always repeating out loud what they're doing to the partner. Like they're almost teaching someone else. So that's a great tip too, is to, as you're practicing, speak it out loud, almost like you're teaching someone else. And it sure. really helps with um, remembering. Yes. And it helps for sure. Especially when you're working with more than like three strands. I feel like the braids that are more than three strands get real complicated. <laughs> Okay, so also one other tip, the sections you're taking from your um, fishtail is going to make a difference too. So if you want a lot of loops to come up, you're going to want to take smaller sections like this. But if you want bigger loops, then you would probably work with sections that are like this big and you would cross them over. So I want a lot of texture and loops, so I started the braid pretty pretty small in the sec and I mean small by the sections I'm grabbing a crossover because once I expand this braid it's going to look pretty full and big so now what I'm going to do is grab my elastic and just um, secure that normally I like to use elastics that match the color of the hair or clear ones but these will all be hiding anyway so okay I'm gonna move on to the other side. I'm actually gonna to move to this side. This side's my better side here. So this side already has the texture in here, so I don't have to worry about adding it. Clip the other side. And so let's say this time around, she did want some hair down. I'm just going to start leaving that out before I secure it into the braid. I'm going to bring her down so you can see again. And this time I'm going to go a little faster. So right hand is adding hair to my left hand and bringing it under. And if you feel like it's hard to, um, if you feel like the hair's tangling, what you can do is get a little bit of like serum on your hands and that'll help you get some slip in there in case it starts to tangle for you. But um, this is good. Um, big face looks more, on the big face looks more big with the braid what should we do Sonia can you um I you, think she's saying like on a wider face shape or like a fuller face shape having it braided back away from the face might make the face appear bigger so is there something that you can offer as a tip that would help like slim wider face shapes things like that you can always add a little bit more hair to what falls in in here like down here, um, just make, it'll soften that look. So that will help a lot. But also like this, sorry, this braid just got a little, I lost my pattern. 
But here's what I'll do for this side. I'll, I'll create a bigger braid with a bigger section. But Sonia, I think um, if you add some hair to the face framing area, like if you leave a little bit of hairs down, that'll really soften it for you. So I'll do that on this side. Okay. So again, cross over. And this side, I'm. you can see I'm using bigger sections. So you'll see less loops in here, but you'll still have a lot of volume because of the texture iron. Okay. But my tension is still pretty, pretty loose. Don't want it to be too tight. Sonia, I think it's great that you're always on here. <laughs> Lots of education. Um, Jeff is asking, um, missed the start prep. Did you use any products? What about crimping? So as you're working on that, can you just um, catch yeah. people who have just joined us up on how you prepped the hair? For sure. So before I started this, she actually was prepped with Guts 10. It's a spray foam from Redken. And what I did is I applied the foam on dry hair and then I blew it out with my paddle brush. And by doing that, I get some really good texture in here so that if you touched it, you could see that there's like grippiness to the hair. And I love doing that because it really keeps the hold in shape and shape. So I prep all my updos with that before I even start the actual style. And then after that, um, I use Iron Shape 11. That's a spray that has heat protection and it also has holes. So if you're gonna be doing any curls, um, they're really gonna hold into place. And then I went in with the texture iron and I, I started um, grabbing small sections and pressing it on. And that's really going to help get that good volume so that you can get those big fluffy braids. And what I love about it is that it does not slip. So if you are working with hair that's very slippery, um, using the texture iron is really going to help. All right, there we go. So again, now I'm closer to her ear. So I'm just going to finish off the braid. I hope that answered your question. Yes, ma'am. That was perfect. Okay. So you can totally see the difference now that I grabbed uh, bigger sections. Okay. And after this, we're going to put them off to the side. Put the braids off to the side and continue to the back of the up style. And it's all going to come together really fast after that. So it's mostly all braids, not a lot of curling in here. And what's nice is we'll be doing a different braid in the back. But the main focus of this style is going to be the fishtail braids. All right. Perfect. So I'm just going to secure that now with my elastic. And I'm going to place my elastic a little bit further down so that I have space to fluff this braid up and expand it. So I'm going to leave that alone. And now what I'm going to do is um, use my curling iron just to add a little bit of curl to the back because this is what you're going to see on the top and I want some more movement. So what I'm going to do is grab my Sambia uh, Marcel 2-in-1 iron. So this is a 2-in-1 because it's a wand as well. I love it because you can just um, use your little button here, press it and detach the, the spoon off of it. Pretty easy. It really saves a lot of room in my stylus kit when I travel. So. I love it. Um, so you're just going to grab a couple of sections 
and I'm going to just twist the hair around it. And untwist. And you can see how much hold that has, and that's only from the guts. You see, it's pretty, pretty there. And it may look stiff, but once you get into it and um, press the curls with your hands, the product breaks up and it becomes a lot softer. So when you're using product, don't be afraid to put it in the hair. Um, this is still pretty workable. All right. Hello. Any other questions, everybody? Beth, yes, that's an awesome tool. Yes, I love this tool so much. We also have um, this tool in, uh, this is a one inch, but we also have it in one and a half, which I love because it creates really big, loose waves and curls. That's actually what I used on my hair today. So now I'm gonna brush those curls a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is grab my, my Sanvia Artist um, styling brush and backcomb this hair a little bit. And I don't need to backcomb it a lot because there's a lot of texture in there now from the texture iron. So um, backcombing it softly is just enough. I don't have to dig in the bristles too hard. And I actually don't want to dig them in too hard because I want to be able to move the hair around. Okay, so for this part, we're going to start doing another braid, but we're just going to do a um, regular three-strand braid. And we're not going to go all the way down. This, I'm only doing it so that it looks like I looped around, I crossed the hair around. And let's start here. So three strand, make sure that you're standing right behind your model or client so that your positioning is right. And cross over, cross my, th my th third strand over to the middle. I'm going to add some hair and cross over to the middle and I'm crossing over on the top, not under. Add some hair to my right hand and cross that strand over to the middle. So we just created just a simple three strand braid and I'm not going to go all the way down just yet, but what I'm gonna do is secure this. Let's see my plastic. We did have a question of if you had to choose between the one inch or one and a half inch with the iron, which would you choose? For an updo? I always um, I'm not sure. Jay, it's Jay Cabrera. They're asking um, which would you choose? Um, I don't know. Okay, so for updos, I actually always go in with a one inch iron. And the reason for that is because um, I want stronger holds, so a, a tighter curl is going to hold longer. So I want longevity to the updo, so I'll go in with a smaller iron because you can always bring down the, the curl and brush it out and, you know, make it a little bit less tight. But I love the one and a half if you want somebody, um, if you have somebody that just wants big volume and loose waves. Okay. So I see Madison Avenue here. Hello, thanks for joining. <laughs> so I'm gonna secure that and pull it up a little bit because this is going to help me create some volume right here at the crown area. Okay, now I'm gonna brush her hair a little bit. It feels like she's getting a little tangled. So now what we're gonna do is start creating a second braid or a what a fourth braid grab all the hair that's loose and connect it and we're going to do a, another three strand braid 
So I'm gonna move first, so. Okay, another three strand braid. Did you see this? Or do you want, should I move her a little bit to the front? That's better. Yeah, let me move to this side. Um, great question from Jeff here. This is this is a great question as far as like perception goes. Um, Jeff saying, "What I love is how much time you eliminate. Sometimes I overdo stuff because I feel like I need to compensate for time." Just curious, does length of service do you ever feel affects how the client perceives updo styles, or is that just a personal fear? <laughs> length I think that's a great question. Do you? Repeat that again. Let me to come. Let me condense it because I, I said a lot there. So, what Jeff's asking is, do you feel like the client's perception of how much time you spend on the updo um, gives them a certain perception of value as far as the updo is concerned? Like, if you're too fast, are they going to think, "Oh, I didn't get my money's worth"? Or do you feel um, like you have to kind of stretch it out so that they feel like they get their money's worth? Definitely not. I think um, some updos are going to take a little bit longer than others. And I think what really matters at the end of the service is uh, the end result. So for me, when I first started doing updos, I never used to prep the hair before I started. So meaning I never used to um, get guts and start blow drying the hair in there. And after I saw how valuable that was, I started to add that to my time. So now my updos actually take longer, but um, I don't think, I feel like as long as your end result is there, it's good. And then every now and then you have a client that wants something super simple, like just curls and the side pin to the side, you know, and that's a lot faster. So in that case, I wouldn't have to prep the entire hair with guts or spend too much time. I think as long as your client is happy with what you did, I think that's what's the best thing. Okay, but a, a time-saving hack is if you're doing bridal hair, always do a trial. I feel like that, that really makes a difference to the updo. So now that I have the, the braid, I'm going to um, start expanding this and I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. And be very gentle when you're pulling it too. So you can always pull more if you want to, but if you over pull, it's going to be a little hard to fix that. You might have to end up doing the style again or the braid. So what I'm going to do is start bringing this up and I'm going to pin it, but I want to make sure I have balance. So as you're pinning it, you want to visually see where it's going. If you see like this is too, too close to the middle, then you're going to want to move it to the side a little bit because you want this braid to fill up the whole nape area as much as you can. And this is what's really going to save you that time. Um, not having to curl the hair, especially because this girl is pretty, she has a good amount of hair and length. So I like how it's going to this side. So I'm going to grab a pin, a bobby pin, and I'm going to use the squiggly side towards the scalp. And when I insert this pin, I'm going to weave in and out so that I could get a good grip. Carla's ma'am teaches Elsa Ray too. Oh, I would love to. Okay. And you can feel it. This one, I didn't feel like it, it was very secure. So I'm going to bring it back in and weave it. And then turn her around. Oops. That clearly wasn't in there. So I'm going to pin got to listen for it sometimes and bring it in there. And right here, I'm going to just bend the elastic in and just to hide it and hold my, hold the braid in place with your hands gently and come in with your bobby pin with your other hand 
and weave it in and out until you feel like it's there. Still feel like the other side's a little loose because there's more hair on that side. So I'm going to come in with another bobby pin and really secure that. Um, I also love using hair pins, like open pins, but right now, because this is so heavy, um, the bobby pin is better for that. And I'm going to start to use a working spray. This is um, Reckon Fashion Works 12. This is a working spray, so it's very flexible. But I feel like now that we're getting close to being done with this updo, I need to start cleaning it up a little bit. So um, I'm going to use some hairspray. So here we go. This is where we're at right now. You can see the folds in here from the top braid at the crown. And the last braid we did is ending up looking like a low bun in a type of way. Now what I'm going to do is start working on my fishtail braids. So if you find that your hair is still slippery and you're pulling out uh, fishtail braids or any kind of braid, you can also use Redken Triple Dry 15 and spray it on there. And that's going to help you get some grip as you're pulling on the braid. So see how this looks right here? It's going to look so much bigger once you expand the braid. So I start from the bottom and gently move up. Could you bring that a little closer to cam camera? Because I'd love for them to see like what you're in, how, how you're pulling those open. Yes. Okay. So very gently working from the bottom. And I have my hand holding the end tail of the braid so that I could get some tension. So this is where you see a lot of the loops happening. And you can do as much as you want. You will find sometimes with um, super layered hair some of these ends will come out, but I think that still looks cute. It just adds more texture. And, um, but if you don't want to have that look happen, the texture iron really helps so that you can get that grip so that they don't slide out. So look how much bigger it's starting to look. Um, I also love doing these braids on hair that's darker because darker hair doesn't show um, as much dimension in updos, but I feel like because there's so many loops in a facial braid, it really adds good dimension to the hair. Okay, so I'm going to leave that alone for now and um, go on to the other braid. And this is the braid that we... Um, that had uh, bigger sections. And her hair feels a bit soft, so I'm gonna add more of this. So if you have bigger sections, it's gonna go a lot faster when you pull these out. But you'll have bigger loops. So work your way up and move down. I see this is getting loose right here. So what I'm going to do is just um, pull it up and start pulling apart. Really pay attention to how the front is looking. Um, you may not want to pull these too far out depending on how your client feels. Most clients love it big. So the bigger the, and fluffier the braid, the better I feel like. Everybody's always asking, how come my braids don't look big? Um, this tool like really will help you get them bigger. Okay, now I'm using um, Fashion Works 11, I mean 12. <laughs> we don't even have a hairspray that's 11, so I don't know where that came from. <laughs> okay. 
It's your lucky number, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> gonna secure the braids okay so here we are now what we're gonna do is cross over and now you can start to really play around with the updo you can cross over the braids um, and have them sit on top or you can cross under and over if you cross one over and you cross one under, it starts to look like the braid is connected all the way around. But I'm gonna just do it over the top. So what I'm gonna do for these is actually start using um, open pins. So my open pins are the ones that are, look like this. It's different. And I'm going to use a brown one for her. Here's another one. It's kind of like a bronzy color. And the reason why I'm going to use these is because if I'm not happy with the placement of my open pin, it's going to be so much easier for me to remove this without snagging and pulling the hair. So... Um, a good way to get grip from these is to um, insert it outwards, like a, like away from you first, and then you're going to turn it and lock it in towards you, your body. So I never used to use, like um, years ago, I didn't really know the value of an open face pin. <laughs> And I was always bobby pinning everything, but it was so much harder and my updos looked a lot more tight. And, you know, if I didn't like the placement of that, I would have to pull them out. And it just was not, not good because it would get messy. So these are a lot more forgiving and I love them. You can still get really good hold with open pins. Carla, Beth is asking um, what you keep your pins in. What do I keep them in? So this is a big um, hack for like if you're doing updos and you're traveling, these are actually headforms. So I not only use headforms for updos, but I use them to hold my pins and bobby pins. So one has um, open pins, another one has bobby pins. And I try to color coordinate so that I can work fast. So this side's, you know, for blonder, lighter hair. Um, I got some black ones down here and some light brown ones. So it's super easy. That way you can be really quick with them. Guess the end result. This looks pretty, Carla. Thank you. Okay. So start hiding your... Um, your elastics. I'm going to use a little bit of Wax Blast 10. This is a spray wax and I'm using this so I can get a little bit of like grippiness to the hair and it also adds shine. Okay. It, so the um, Wax Blast is also helping me polish those little flyaways. Move over to this side, hide the elastic. Okay. And this tail. So this tail, when you have tails like this and you don't want to see them, what you could do is um, spray them a little bit with your hairspray and grab a bobby pin. You're going to grab a bobby pin and just insert the bobby pin like that. And... Find a good spot to hide it. And that's how you hide those little tails. Now you can really start to play around with it and see um, where it's sitting. So um, another trick is 
if you don't like where your where your um your pins are sitting at so like let's say i pin this here and i didn't like it right there um what i like to do is just um grab my um rat tail comb and just very gently um stick it in there and start to pull it out that way you're not pulling out too much on accident. Now, I see a bobby pin sticking out right there. So always, always check. And always, it's very important to ask your, um, your client how their head is feeling. You don't ever want them to feel like something is uncomfortable because you don't want them to start hurting during their wedding day or whatever the event is. Hello. Cool. How much time do you usually book for an upstyle like this? Uh, about 45 minutes to an hour. You know, um, the, like I said, her hair was already prepped be with the guts before I started. But um, definitely behind the chair or on site, I always plan for 45 minutes at least 45 minutes if it's like the bride totally an hour you want to make sure everything is perfect um bridesmaids um always end up being a little bit more simple with their updos compared to the bride so i feel like 45 minutes for them is is good but it also depends you know that's why consultation is important so if you're adding hair extensions and all that kind of stuff, I would definitely plan for about an hour. So now if you want a little bit more volume at the crown area, you can start to um, pull this up a little bit. And see, this adds a lot more softness if you had some little hairs out. Most people do want some hair out, I feel like. So now I'm going to use the, the wand and create some curl. One of my favorite ways to use the wand is um, polishing the hair. So if I see any flyaways that are just too much, I'll start to polish it down and it just really cleans it up, down. Just put it on a low setting and start to polish it. And then finish off with the Stronger Hold Spray. This is um, Triple Take 32 Redken. This is really going to hold everything in place. And if you want some um, shine, this is my favorite spray for shine, Shine Flash. It works great on any kind of hair. And here you go. Let's see. I love the tip about... Um... Polishing the flyaways. I would never, never think to take a wand and actually use that to and kind of lay down those flyaways. That's an awesome tip. Oh, yeah. I use it all the time. I even use it on my own hair. I have um, really curly baby hair, so I'll just, like, grab it and start to... Hmm. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. I love Any it. Any questions, guys? I think we have um, hit... Yeah. All the questions so far. Um, so, you, go ahead. I was going to say, if you wanted to take it up another level with your um, updates, you can always accessorize too. So, he, um, one of my favorites is um, Rose, uh, not Rosemary, Baby's Breath. So, I'm calling everything the wrong name today. This is definitely not Rosemary, Baby's Breath but you can just place it on there. <laughs> Maybe I'm hungry. <laughs> so super easy. Uh, yeah. Very nice. Um, actually, one question that just popped in that, it, that it is a great question. Colleen was asking, how do you add volume on thin temples? Which I, I could really see that being a challenge. Like if people don't have a lot of density here, 
like if you want some fullness in, in that area. So if you want to add volume to thin dim dimples or temples, um, I would use Guts 10 as well. And what you can do is use a Denman brush and start to um, really pull. Let me show you what a Denman Oh my goodness. So, okay, so I don't have my Denman brush on me right now. But the Denman brush is really going to help you pull up with ele elevation and that'll create volume. Or you can use a small round brush and elevate it up and then um, use your texture iron as well. I would just leave a little bit of the baby hairs out so that you, um, you it, it still looks soft if you're adding the texture iron. Awesome. Great tips, Carla. And lots and lots of comments of how beautiful this looks and how elegant it looks. So thank you so much. That was really beautiful how detailed you were. And I took away a lot of little things that I just wouldn't have considered, like the little way down the, the baby hairs with the iron trick. So thank great, you. great education today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here today and everybody that joined and asked questions. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So um, go give Carla a follow and lots more education to come from Ms. Carla Valenzuela. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Carla. Bye-bye. And of course, much more education coming this week as well. So join us tomorrow on the 25th. Over on Instagram Live, we have Amanda Ziegelman. She, the, they're going to be sharing some hand styling, creating texture. Also, tomorrow on the 25th, join us back here on the YouTube and Facebook channel for Wellness Wednesday for an interview with Lindsay Olson about the artist's journey. How to balance all these different things like being on the road and being a busy stylist. Then on the 26th, join us again on Instagram Live. Blake Reed Evans going to be sharing some bobs with us some different angles and shapes. And if you work within the school system, we have a very special program that we do for our partner schools. You can get a behind the scenes look at what we offer our partner schools for education. It's called Skills Up. You can head to sambia.com backslash skills up to check out how you can join us for a sneak peek. And of course, if you are in Chicago for the America's Beauty Show, please stop by. We've got Sam himself, Jesse Linares, Al Campbell, Twyla Jane, and Evie Peterson. They're all going to be presenting live education at ABS. So make sure you pop by and check that out. Thank you all so much for watching. We will see you tomorrow for more education.